Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Mineral Resources and Energy Minister Gwede Mantashe says government intends reviewing ESCOM's core contracts and the renewable power contract signed earlier in the decade. Terence Kremer joins me to talk about the implications of such a move. Hi Terence. Hi Shana. Why is government concerned about these contracts? Well, for the coal contracts, we know that primary energy costs, mostly coal, have been surging in Eskom for the last more than a decade. So they double digit increases every year. For over a decade, they're a major cost item other than staffing costs for Eskom. And uh, the, the, the main reason is there's been this transition for Eskom from the cost plus mine arrangement to shorter term contracts, usually brought in by road and those are definitely more expensive so there's been a fundamental change in the nature of uh, the, the coal supply to Eskom and uh, the, the, the reason for that is one is that there's been a depletion of resources of those cost plus mines and two Eskom hasn't invested in those those cost plus mines where a resource base still exists and that was a conscious decision during an era at Eskom that was defined by state capture to move away from that. And there's been a conscious decision subsequently to reinvest in the cost plus mine where the resource still exists. But Eskom, as we know, has got uh, coal assets that are old as well. And uh, look, these, are, these assets are already, bu uh, these units are, are built to burn a certain type of coal. So they need to match the coal quality with uh, the boilers. And that's also an added difficulty. And there's an additional competition that's come in uh, for, from India that requires Eskom type grade coal. It's a very low grade type of coal. And in the past, we didn't used to export it. And now there is a market for that sort of coal. So there's a number of issues, a number of balls in the air, which have basically seen coal prices uh, um, uh, escalate over the last few years. So. So uh, th these are, it is a major issue for Eskom and it's a, it's a big cost item. And then on the IPP contracts, this was a co again a conscious decision by government to integrate renewable energy into South Africa's mix. This was an, a, a totally new infant industry. And ironically, back in 2010, uh, when the IP was developed, it, it had to be a policy adjustment. Uh, so we knew we were going to pay a little bit more for renewables so that we could start uh, diversifying our energy mix away from this coal heavy, coal dominant mix. So we knew we went in with our eyes wide open and the first few billing rounds maybe were too big and too early because subsequent to that we know that uh, uh, wind and solar uh, PV prices have collapsed um, so steeply that those are now the cheapest options but when we contracted they weren't. Uh, and that's why we pay these higher prices for um, our, uh, for these first uh, three bid windows of, our, of renewables IPPs, and that's for 20 years contracts or power purchase agreements. So uh, these are two cost items that go into uh, go through Eskom. The one is a real cost item. The one the other is a pure pass through that the, the regulator uh, grants. Um, Eskom to pay for the RPPs. What is the mooted remedy for coal and can it work? The current remedy that the, the minister is talking about is a uh, indexed coal price or setting the coal price domestically at a level where no super profits are made but where miners still make money. <laughs> so it's a, um, it's a price setting mechanism. There's been a dust discussion around indexing of coal before there have been people working on indexing of coal before. Typically, though, uh, if, the mo if you do these sort of interventions, uh, you have unintended consequences. And I think the, the one uh, you know, threat here is if uh, Eskom's assets still need coal uh, deep into, well, we know, to into the 2020s, and some of them into the 2030s, and then two, Madupian Cusilia up beyond 2050, so they still need coal. You need to um, ensure that the, the coal miners and the private sector investors are going to invest uh, either in those cost plus assets because Eskom will pay for that, or if it's going to be an arm's length arrangement that there's going to be a, a return that they, they, um, they're going to accept. 
This is happening at a time when there's a massive energy transition in the world, where South Africa, a new report that came out this week, is extremely vulnerable in the coal sector. One, because of uh, you know, the fact that the coal, coal price and, um, is rising domestically to such an extent that even existing coal-fired power stations could become stranded assets. And two, because we are so linked to the Indian market now, with nearly 40% of our export coal going into that market. And that's a market that is clearly wanting to diversify away from coal or domesticate where it can, so uh, produce more of its own domestic coal. So we're pretty vulnerable as a coal industry. This adds another uh, element of risk to that industry. I suppose if there are guaranteed offtakes for many, many years, I suppose that risk can be mitigated. But through an, and um, an index coal price, but it does definitely add a new level of policy certainty, a new uh, area of risk, um, I suppose, at a time when Eskom is looking at to shore up its long-term coal contracts and move away from these short-term, very expensive ones. So um, whether the remedy will work or not, I think it, there's a number of unknowns and it could uh, actually cause more problems than it's worth. Are the IPPs really hurting Eskom? N uh, no, uh, that's the simple answer. It's a misinterpretation by the minister and government of how these contracts are structured. As I mentioned, these were big and early, so probably we do have uh, we have seen a massive decline in solar PV and wind cobs costs subsequently. But these contracts were fair at the time. These were uh, the outcome of a, a highly robust and competitive processes, three bid windows where I think we saw after every successive round a decline in the costs. So th there were high, high prices for especially solar in the solar PV, CSP in the first few rounds, wind as well, but those have come down to now a cost which is way better than uh, anything that coal can do, even after you need to inject flexible generation um, a, coal, a, a, a combination of solar, wind and flexible generation, be it gas or uh, battery storage, is still a, a, a materially cheaper than any new coal that's going to come into the system. And that's one of the ironies that we see in the next, the new policy adjustments that are going to be made in the RP are to cater for more expensive coal to, to extend the life in some ways of the coal mining uh, industry. Um, uh, so it's been a major shift. But we, we, we have this thing of sanctity of contracts, um, and it's, a, it's something that you know, we have to live with in a whole range of areas of life. And when you sign a contract, you have to be able to honor it. And if you don't honor contracts, you, know, you run the risk. As we know, we, we're under the microscope at the moment from Moody's, and we run a number of risks if, uh, if we start, start seeing that we're fiddling with, with contracts. But more fundamentally, we know that Eskom's broke and, uh, and is not going to really be able to close the supply gap that is now imminent and emerging. We've already saw, I think, 30 days of load shedding uh, this year. It's, it's, it's very a substantial risk. We need to start closing the gap. And we're going to be going to ask these very same investors, while we're pulling the rug on their contracts, to uh, put faith in the South African economy and the South African electricity supply industry and invest in new supply. So, because as soon as the IRP is out and the ministerial determinations are in place, we are probably going to see new uh, rounds for renewables and new rounds for gas to power. And uh, really, this is a very, very bad signal, uh, a renegotiation of a contract that should be uh, you know, really secure and embedded. And it's done uh, with a misunderstanding of the, of the impact on Eskom. As I said earlier, it's a pass-through. Uh, um, it's catered for as a pass-through. Uh, it doesn't affect. It's a new cash neutral to Eskom. Okay, when Eskom has surplus, surplus capacity, which we know it doesn't have because it's been load shedding, it does displace some of Eskom's uh, own production, and therefore it does uh, maybe dampen down some of its revenue that it could have earned. But there's opportunity in the region because there's pent up demand to do exports, and we do have a South African power pool, and they can and Eskom can generally get better prices for that. So it is really not 
uh, and it is not pro profit negative for Eskom. And on a cash flow level, if you look year by year, uh, Eskom actually uh, has been given a higher amount in the tariff for the RPPs than it's actually spent. So on a cash flow level, it's actually been cash flow positive for Eskom. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, in the, the, the the sort of new parlance, it's total fake news. And I think the uh, government has to come to terms with that and really needs to look at itself very carefully and look at the issue of uh, the sanctity of contracts very carefully before it starts doing any of these big reviews of renewables RPPs. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily Email Newsletter.